you're constantly continuing to create stories. Stories are everywhere. They surround you. They're all about you. Every time you, everywhere you go, everywhere you walk, you're walking through stories. The challenge is, how do you get all those stories out of you? Have you ever heard the expression, make a point, tell a story? Well, if you're not familiar with that, that expression comes from professional speaker Bill Go. What Bill was trying to say is that if you want to connect with your audience, you have to tell a story. That's what connects the deepest, the fastest, the best, and the most thoroughly. Challenges. In order to tell a story to your audience, you have to get that story out of you. Somehow, you have to dig down and find inside you a way to get that story out into your audience. And it can be a struggle. It can be a struggle to try to dig down, find that story, and get it out. Have you? Ever struggled with your stories? Yes. Yeah. Tim, a few others. Okay. Good. Rest you in the wrong room. That's all right. <laughs> Me too. I struggled with stories. In fact, ten years ago, I came to Toastmasters. Before even coming to Toastmasters, I struggled with stories. Didn't know how to do a story. No clue, no idea, no understanding of it whatsoever. It was a struggle. So I thought I'd join Toastmasters, and that would give me the solution. Right? Toastmasters is the solution to any problem you have, pretty much. <laughs> Toastmasters is it. <laughs> exactly. So I came to Toastmasters, said, OK, great. I learned how to tell a story. And I found the CC manual. You heard of this? A few of you know what the CC manual is. If you don't, the CC manual steps you through 10 Basic prepared delivery skills, wonderful stuff, vocal variety, getting to the point, persuasion, inspiring the audience, really great stuff. I thought, great. I go through the manual, and at the end, I'll be a storyteller. Go ahead and tell a story. Makes sense? So I went through the CC manual, it took me a year. So you're snickering. Be nice. It took me a year. At the end of the year, I thought, well, I understand now more about prepared delivery skills, like getting to the point, that sort of thing, but it really didn't help me tell a story. I still don't know how to tell a story. That was okay, because there are still more books to explore. <laughs> I started looking around, and there was an advanced manual, and one of them is called storytelling. You know the advanced manuals? If you don't know the advanced manuals, that's only five projects. And each project focuses on a different thing that the manual's about. So the storytelling manual, five projects, all about storytelling. Thought, Great. Now we'll definitely learn how to tell a story. Went through six months, got through the storytelling manual. But at the end, I still, I knew more about what a story was. I didn't know how to tell a story. Now, it's been a year and a half. I'm starting to get a little bit frustrated here. Because remember, it was like even more years before that. So finally, I decide I'm going to go outside of Toastmasters. I can tell you're shocked. Some horrified. And some of you are thinking, there's something outside Toastmasters? <laughs> Yes, I decided to go outside Toastmasters and see about the storytellers, the guys who tell the stories, the gals who tell the stories. See what they do. Right. Makes sense. You want to learn how to tell a story, you go to a storyteller. Okay. Well, I went to the storyteller. A couple of years I went to this guy and I kept going to these things. And did you ever hear somebody talk with a lot of jargon? <laughs> Yeah, if you don't know what jargon is, it's just where somebody in a particular specialized area just talks about stuff only they kind of understand. So storytellers that keep talking about needs to be a hero. And I kept thinking, I don't know, my characters are kind of like zeros. <laughs> and they said, you need to be a protagonist, an antagonist. And I thought, well, what about a retagonist? <laughs> and finally, after two years of so much of this jargon, I was so confused. 
I didn't know what the heck a story was, much less how to do a story. And it had been three and a half years. I mean, that, that's a little bit of time. I'm just getting so, I'm just starting thinking, that's it. I can't tell a story. It's not possible. Not going to happen in my lifetime. I give up. I quit. I'm gone. Sign an argument. Bye. Until recently, when I found a red paperback book called World Class Speaking by world champion speaker Craig Valentine. Heard of this book? Yes, my student. Yeah, thank you. If you don't know about this book, it's called World Class Speaking. It's a red paperback book, and it was amazing. It was like this red paperback book spoke to me. And this red paperback book said, Tim, here I am, the answer to your storytelling questions. And I thought back, book, this could be an instructional relationship. <laughs> and in the book, Craig told about the secret of a story. And I'm being a storyteller. And it turns out it's all about the story character. All about the story character. So once you have characters that are alive and kind of come alive, they kind of take over. And that's the story. The story character is the story. And there are three basics to a story character. Once you understand these three basics, you start connecting them with the audience. You start being able to tell a story. Everything just kind of flows. But if you're missing the three basics, Things just kind of crash and die. Sometimes nicely in Toastmasters, sometimes not so nicely outside of Toastmasters. <laughs> Maybe you've been there. <coughs> All about the three basics. So today, you're going to learn the three basics of a story character. You're going to find out the secret <coughs> of a good story. Find out how all these things interact and build up. These three basics kind of reinforce each other to make the story better and better. And by the time you leave here today, you'll be able to tell a story anyhow, anywhere, any when, to anyone, anytime. Does that sound good? Yeah, yeah. That's the goal. So to start you out with the first basic, you go to the second basic, show how those interconnect, and then finally build up the third basic. And everything all begins with that first basic, the first basic, your story character. It's something that if you don't have, the audience has no way into your story. Have you heard stories like that, you just can't get into them? They go something like, so I was talking to Bob, and then Bob was going to Frank, and Frank said Jill, and Jill came on the other side, and remember Carrie, Carrie was over on the phone, and then you're like, I don't know what the heck's happening. I can't keep straight Bob and Carrie and June. It just doesn't work. Have you told a story like that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the audience is just not with you. They're checking out the ceiling, anything else. Some look embarrassed, some are laughing. That's what happens when missing the first basic. If you have the first basic, audience is with you from the beginning. They can get into the story on the ground floor and they write it wherever it goes. Have the first basic connect in strongly, faster, stronger, right from the beginning so you don't lose anybody. So everything interconnects. <coughs> first basic of a story character is story characters need to be seen. All right, quick quiz, just to see if you're listening or awake. Why? First basic, story characters need to be seen. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Exactly. Story characters need to be seen. It's all about being seen. It's all about being able to see that story character because there's an issue if you can't see something. We'll talk about that in a little bit. It's really important that things are seen in your story. Once things are seen in your story, then your audience is with you. Then your audience connects. Then your audience can be there. Then your audience can be involved. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, in the story I told, first of all, name a, st a story character for my story. Me. I, I was a story character. Now, I didn't describe me because probably you know roughly what I look like. <laughs> However, 
Was there another story character? Yes. The Red Book. The Book, yes! And you answered my second question. You're psychic or you're reading my notes. <laughs> you follow the above. <laughs> the Book. Well, and what do you know about the Book? Great. Uh, paperback. Red paperback book. Exactly. It's a red paperback book. That's what you know. And that's very important. Very important to know it's a red paperback book. Because something happens when you have something and you, all you know is that it's a red paperback book. There's something magic that happens. Right. And funny too. <coughs> Before I get into that, first let's see where we are. Now let's see where, where you are in terms of creating a story. Now, first thing about a story is telling a story is like inviting your audience to look out a window. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I just invited you to look out a window. Right? Right. So you're looking out that window. Now what if you look out a window and you look out that window and you see Nothing. How long do you look out that window? Not at all. <laughs> Got better things to do. In fact, policemen will use this as a device to get people to move. They'll say, nothing to see here, move along. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to see, no paying attention, can't look at it, no business here. <laughs> so there's nothing to see, you move along. The police there probably even there is something to see you move along with. Now what if you look out that window and you see me and a red paperback book? Now how long do you look? <laughs> Some would look the other way. Thank you for the people who didn't say that. I appreciate it. <laughs> a little longer. You look out just a little bit. A little bit you look out that window. Because there's something to see. In fact, in traffic, you hear about that called Gaper's Block. You know about this? Everybody has to slow down just to see it. They're not going to be in it. They're not going to be about it. They're not even going to remember it, but they got to see it. And because they slow down, you got to see it. I mean, you slow down anyway. Why don't you look? That's the power of things being seen. And I did say there's something very important about being a red paperback book. Don't worry, I didn't forget it. It's a red paperback book. That's all you know. So two things happen when I tell you that it's a red paperback book. One thing that happens is you think of a red paperback book. You think of a different red paperback book. You think of a different red paperback book. So the result is that you each think of your own red paperback book. Does that make sense? So it's kind of individual, kind of, kind of customized. Makes sense of that. Okay. A second thing happens. Where do you get this idea for the red paperback book? You don't know how big it is or short it is. Where do you get the idea? In your mind. Right. In your mind. So you've got to create this red paperback book out of your mind, out of your thoughts, out of your ideas. Make sense? So you'll create a red paperback book that means something to you. So not only is it customized, you'll see a red paperback book that means something to you. You'll see a red paperback book that means something to you. You'll see a red paperback book that means something to you. It's not only customized, it's personalized. And already there, by giving just a few details, you dropped your audience right in the middle of your story. Does that make sense? Simple, but powerful. Just a few details. There's that temptation to want to kind of keep details going and going, but that just that goes into book novel territory, war and peace kind of thing. Just keep it simple. A few details make that story character seen. Create the scene, make them seen. Create the scene, make them seen. To do that, just use a few details. Create the scene, make them seen. That's the first basic. Story character must be seen. All right? That's the
the basics of seeing, but even if you have something seen still, doesn't necessarily connect. It's a starting point, but if you have something seen, and you don't have the second basic, then things can get away from you a little bit. Just a little bit. Because what happens is you end up with a story character that's two-dimensional, not believable. You don't have a second base if you end up with an unbelievable story character because the person just doesn't believe it. You hear these things and you're thinking, I don't think so. I don't think it's going to exist. I don't think it's possible. I'm not going to bother listening to it. And that's it. No, no, not going to happen. You heard stories like this? <laughs> yeah, you hear them and they're all kind of, they're all kind of flat. It's all like, there's no way. It may be funny, it may be silly, it may be interesting, but it's not really something you can get into and get involved with. <sighs> Told stories like that? Maybe you didn't know it at the time, maybe you found it afterwards, or it was just flat. It just didn't involve people, didn't pull them in. That's what happens when you're missing the second basic. If you do have the second basic, the story, all of a sudden, it has a third dimension. There's something believable to it. There's something instinctive that people know about it that they get, they understand, and they say, yeah, that can be. I believe in that. It's the power of that second basis, the story character, to pull people in and get them to believe right from the very beginning. And unfortunately, many speakers leave this second basic out. So many speakers' story fail before they've even begun. And the second basic, story character must be known. All right, you know the drill? Second basic is a story character must be? No. No. Thank you. Story character must be known. And all that means is it's important to have some sort of background on somebody before you even can really pay attention. Does that make sense? You've got to kind of understand where a person comes from before you can really get involved and really start doing things with them got to have a background. They've got to have a history. So you want to eliminate the mystery and give them a history. Eliminate the mystery, give them a history. It's that simple. When you eliminate the mystery, give them a history, all of a sudden they have a background, they have a place where they come from, and it gives you a way into the story that you can believe in, you can focus on, you can think about and say, okay, yeah, yeah, all right. That could be. That could be. And it pulls you in. And it pulls you into the story. All right, the story I told, what do you know about me before I even joined Toastmasters? You wanted to tell a story? I struggled with stories. That's something you know right at the very beginning. Before the story even starts, you know that I struggled with stories. And having knowing that, something special happens. A special connection is made because something very special happens once you know and understand that background of the person. Something very special in terms of the story. We'll get to that in a little bit. For right now, let's think about what a story is. Remember, a story is like inviting a person to look out a window. Inviting you to look out this window. So you look out the window, and now at least you're seeing something. You see me, you see red paperback books. You look a little bit. A little bit. Not too long, maybe not too much there. But at least you're going to take a look and see what's going on. But now if you look out a window, and things are seen, but also known, so you can see me, see the red paperback book, but you also know that I struggle with stories. How long do you look now? A little bit longer. A little bit longer, exactly. Thank you. A little bit longer. A little longer. A little longer because something very special happens when you know I struggle with stories. Very special. And that's really the secret of stories. 
the secret of a good story is what happens when you know that I struggle with stories. Because once you know that I struggle with stories, that begins the conflict. It begins the conflict. So when you're telling a story, you want to make sure that there's a place where you begin the conflict. Now, a lot of stories, you hear them, and there really is no conflict in them. You heard stories like that? Not really a lot of conflict. And they go something like this. They say something like, woke up in the morning, went outside, beautiful day, went back home, had dinner, went to bed. Woke up the next day, went outside, went, had dinner, went to bed. Woke up the next day, went outside, beautiful morning, had dinner, went to bed. And finally, after a while, like, oh boy! Let's keep eyes open! <laughs> That's what happens when you don't have conflict in your story. If you told a story like that that didn't have any conflict, some I've done that before. Before I understood the importance of conflict, the importance of connecting, I told those stories and they're boring, they're adult. If you put the conflict in and you give them a history to create that conflict from the very beginning, then, then, you hook people in from the beginning, you get them interested in your story. So you begin the conflict. Eliminate the mystery, give them a history. And begin the conflict. That's the second basic. The story character must be no. And now we've got all these basics that are great. But there's a thing most speakers don't do. Most speakers don't do it because they do it, their stories, they come off more like, like a news report rather than an actual story. And maybe you've heard these sort of things. Usually start as icebreakers. Sometimes later, but icebreakers. So it's like a news report. It's like, Bob Smith is 24 years old. Dogs, walks the woods, and we understand that Bob is thinking about raising a family, and we'll have more on that story coming up at 11 as a follow up. <laughs> <laughs> and you're thinking, not a story. It's a narrative, it's some sort of words going on, but it's not a story. It's near, but if you tell a story, it's better. A news report is great, a story is even better. And that's what happens when you understand this third basic. This third basic will open everything up. Most people don't use the third basic. If you use the third basic, you already put yourself ahead of most speakers out there. So if you like somebody, tell them about this. If you don't, don't tell them about it. The power of this third basic cannot be underestimated. Using the third basic will transform your stories to a whole other level. And the third basic of a story character is story characters must be heard. The quiz. Heard. Heard. <laughs> <laughs> Third basic, story characters must be heard. heard. All right. Story characters must be heard. Just a second. You're probably thinking what I'm going to say. See, you're thinking, what the heck does that mean, Tim? What the heck does story characters must be heard mean? It doesn't make any sense. Like, cat it? <laughs> I don't get this. Okay. Good point. Let me explain it. thing in a story is that you have dialogue. Dialogue drives your story. If you don't have dialogue, you really don't have a story for a reason we'll get to in a little bit. Dialogue is so incredible, so powerful, that most speakers leave it out. Maybe it's too much bother, and they just want to cut to the chase and get to the good parts, we're there in it. Maybe it's some other reason. Dialogue is so very important. Now, dialogue is simply where somebody says something, 
and somebody else says something, it just goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's dialogue. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So far, I'm throwing anybody? <laughs> okay. Back and forth dialogue. Okay, great. Now, when I say dialogue, most likely you're thinking about external dialogue. External dialogue. And that's simply where somebody says something and somebody else replies, and there's a little bit of a back and forth. Does that make sense? You're thinking, okay, dialogue, all right, I get this, Tim. No problem. It's external, back and forth. Somebody says something, somebody replies, back and forth it goes. And in my story I told, was there any dialogue between two characters? One character. One character. We'll get to that in a little bit. Remember? Your instructor. Pardon me? Your instructor that was trying to tell you all these things with the, the special verbiage and all that. Okay, okay. Well, there were two characters. Remember, there was a, was a book. It was me. Do they talk? No. Yes, yes, they did. Sort of. Okay, thank you. A little bit. I don't usually brag about talking to books. <laughs> <laughs> but in this case, I'll make an exception. What if the book? A little bit of dialogue. A little bit of back and forth. So there was some external dialogue. Now. You're probably thinking, okay, Tim, I get it. External dialogue, no problem. And my story doesn't have any, any other people in it because, you know, I like to talk about myself. It's a whole other issue. <laughs> so that's the only type of dialogue there is. External dialogue, right, because somebody has to say something and somebody else answers, right? Make sense? Not quite. There is another type of dialogue. Very powerful, very useful, especially if you're telling a story where it features you, which is okay. I like those stories. And I tell them. And that is internal dialogue. It's very simple, exactly as you're saying. One person is where you tell the audience what you're thinking. Internal dialogue. So if you're telling a story and you're the only one in it, that's all right. Just create some dialogue. Instead of saying, you know, I went outside the other day, did whatever, say, well, I thought it's a great day, I'm going to go outside. Does that make sense? Internal dialogue. Now, was there any internal dialogue in my story? Yes. Yes. What? Exactly. Thank you for not saying too much. I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, yes, there was a lot. Because the story was about me and my situation and to get people to connect with that. Notice there was dialogue. Now you're probably saying, Tim, oh, wait a minute here, I don't know, this just doesn't make any sense to me. You just said that dialogue is between two people. And somebody says something, and somebody answers, and goes back and forth and back and forth. I don't see any two people here. I see you talking about you. Where is the other person? You? You've gone crazy. Me? I'm not quite that schizophrenic. <laughs> Close. Close. Some, thank you. Somebody already said it. Yes, exactly. The audience. The audience always answers. Audience always answers. When I finish that thing, I say, okay, got the CC now. Still don't know how to tell a story. The audience answer says, is he going to finally turn out and tell a story? Otherwise, why am I here? <laughs> Thoughts are going on in your mind. Every time I pause, every time I stop, every time I say, don't stop. Thoughts are going on through your head. There's this dialogue going on right now between me and you. Does that make sense? There's this dialogue going on between me and you. And that's the great power of dialogue. Audience dialogue. Now, sometimes it's silent. But sometimes you can use audience dialogue for a technique. And all you do is you tell the audience what you think the audience is thinking. Make sense? Now, an example of that would be you're thinking, Tim's been using audience dialogue all the way through the bloody speech. <laughs> <laughs> audience dialogue. Incredibly powerful incredibly useful because something happens with dialogue that is so important, so crucial to your story that without it, 
the story will die. Sometimes nicely, sometimes not so nicely, again, depending upon your Toastmasters, non Toastmaster situation. Get to that in just a little bit. So here we are in telling the story. Right now, you're looking out that window and things are seen and known. So you can see me, you see the red paperback book, you know I struggle with stories. You focus a little bit. A little bit. Now what if you see me, you see the red paperback book, you know I struggle with stories, and you hear, I got to the CC manual, I got some great prepared delivery skills, but I still don't know how to tell a story. Now how long it is? As long as it takes. As long as it takes. Because there's something in human nature that wants to find out what happens next. You may not care about me. It's all right. But you want to know what's going to happen. You want to fast forward there to get to the end if you can. If you're watching this thing on YouTube, you're like, Phew! okay, that's the end. Because something special happens with dialogue. Good dialogue. Builds the conflict. Dialogue builds the conflict. Does that make sense? In fact, if you've got dialogue in your speech and it's not building conflict, take it out and put something else in. Maybe you've heard these sort of stories. Got dialogue, Bob and Jim. Hi, Bob, how's it going? Jim, it's a great day. Couldn't be better. Bob, that's wonderful. Jim, I think it's wonderful too. And it goes, Boring. But if you build conflict, you notice in the story that I told, every single time I came back, the conflict built a little bit more, a little bit higher, a little bit more and more, until finally it reached this huge level. And that was the end of the story. Dialogue builds conflict. Can't stress that enough. You're telling a story, and you're not using dialogue, you're telling a boring story. Now maybe your friends aren't going to tell you that. Maybe Toastmasters are going to tell you that. Find an honest person. They'll tell you that. Go outside a Toastmaster. Believe me, they'll tell you that. They may walk out of you and tell you that way. It's all about dialogue. Dialogue builds conflict. It's so essential, so important. So the audience always answers. So if you're telling a story, if you're the only one in it, it's all right. Use internal dialogue. Let the audience answer. Let the audience connect. Let the audience get interested. Or use audience dialogue to let the audience know you know what they're thinking. The closer you get to telling the audience what they're thinking and it's actually what they're thinking, the more powerful your story, the more you connect. Because the audience knows you're with them. You've been there. You're one of us. Not one of these weird speaker dudes. You're one of us. It's okay. <laughs> Dialogue builds the conflict. That is the third basic story character must be heard. Now, now we're going to wrap things up. I promised you at the beginning a lot of stuff you cover. And if you use this stuff, it is going to help you so much in your storytelling. If you came in here and you thought, I can't tell a story, now you can. You may not believe me. Start using these techniques, start using them, start going through them. We're going to review them a little bit just to cover the last moment. World champion speaker Craig Valentine says, always signal your clothes. Because some people, that's the only thing they will listen to. <laughs> so if you've been ignoring me the whole time, your last chance to get it right here. First basic of the story, character. Story characters must be seen. Quick review. Story characters must be seen. Exactly. Story characters must be seen. And the whole thing about it is to create the scene, make them seen. Create the scene, make them seen.
make them seen. Because magical things happen, you make them seen, and especially use just a few details. Maybe tempting to use a lot of details, but use just a few details. Because there are two very important things for your audience. One is it will customize the speech. Your whole audience will get their own picture. Remember one person did a was doing a talk and they said they talked about a blind woman and the guy afterwards gave a feedback. Remind me of my ex-wife. Could have been a good connection or a bad connection, didn't go into details, but it was very personal. And it personalizes. So it customizes because they see things, but it personalizes because you pull things out of your audience's mind. Deep things. Things maybe they didn't want to remember. Hopefully, I didn't do that with a red paperback book. If you do have deep trauma about a red paperback book, I have to apologize. <laughs> Look at more red paperback books, get it out of your mind. First basic story characters must be themed. And then that brings us to the second basic of a story character story character must be no. Oh, you're jumping the gun here. But enthusiastic, I like it. <laughs> Story characters must be known. And all that means is, you have a history? You have a history? You have a, you have a history. Your story character should have a history. Make sense? Yeah. Eliminate the mystery, give them a history. Eliminate the mystery, give them a history. You can give them a history, all of a sudden you've got something that could happen, something that's real, something where your audience can put themselves in there and say, okay, I'm here. As opposed to something they're kind of watching way off in the distance, all of a sudden they jump right into the story. Making it known, making it real, and get right in there. Because something very magical happens when you eliminate the mystery, give them the history. It begins the conflict. Begins the content. And the secret of any great story is content. Telling a story there's no conflict, you're telling a bad story. I know we don't use words like bad in Toastmasters. Well, I use those words. It's the bad <laughs> story. <laughs> you know what we do? I do. All about conflict. Story has to have conflict. Conflict drives the story forward. We'll get to that in the third basic in just a little bit. Begins the conflict. It's so important. And finally, coming to the third basic, the thing most speakers don't do in their story. If you do that, you put yourself above most speakers. In fact, if you're telling a story that doesn't have this in it, if you put it in, you double the effectiveness of your story. That's the third basic. Story characters must be heard. Exactly. Story characters must be heard. That's all about dialogue. Dialogue is simply somebody says something, somebody answers. Somebody says something, somebody answers. Back and forth and back and forth. And you think instantly, aha, external dialogue. Two characters, back and forth. Right? You learn two other types of dialogue. Very powerful, very useful, especially if you're telling a story which doesn't have more than one character. That's internal dialogue, where you tell the audience what you're thinking. It's your chance to unburden. Be careful, it's not a psychological thing here. It's not a couch. So be careful with you how far you go, but it does give you a chance to tell you. And audience dialogue. You tell your audience what your audience is thinking. Connect on that. And really, really solve Deep impact on your audience. And that's really important. Dialogue is so important because dialogue builds the conflict. If you're telling a story, and the dialogue is going on, it's not building the conflict. Then, again, more, more boring story. You can leave out no, but you leave out heard really boring. Because it's just like this. Just like this. World champion speaker Craig Valentine said, Imagine the Titanic if the water never rose. <laughs> Pretty boring story. <laughs> <laughs> That's the third thing. 
build the conflict, use the dialogue, external, internal audience, because story characters must be heard. Now, I've been talking about a lot of stuff. Some of you are thinking, ah, Tim, I don't really care. It doesn't matter to me. I know you say things to be seen, known, and heard, but frankly, it doesn't matter to me. I'm just going to do what I'm usually going to do, and I'm saying fine. If you're happy with the connection you're getting with your stories, you're happy with the audience looking down, you're happy with the audience looking down, happy with the audience doing one of these. <laughs>